contact points, i.e. your handlebar grips and your saddle, are every bit as important as getting your bike set up correctly in the first place. Now, over the years, I've been lucky enough to kind of find my way without having to mess around with too many different options, but I'm well aware it's not always that simple. So what is it that goes into making a saddle comfortable for some riders and not for others? Ergon invited me here to the design headquarters in Koblenz, Germany, to find out exactly what goes into designing and manufacturing the essential contact points for your bike. It's a company started by a cyclist, Frank Arnold, who incidentally is actually the brother of the founder of Canyon Cycles, Roman Arnold. Now, it's very clear to me that this is a company that lives and breathes bikes and design as well as ergonomics. You can see subjects, books and studies everywhere around the building and it's very clear that there's a serious amount of cyclists working in this expert company. Now, I'm really excited to be here and I'm really enthusiastic to find out exactly what the process is. Let's go and have a closer look at all of those steps, starting with the very early conceptual drawings and the initial design. Industrial design or product design is basically um, joining the whole, the whole chain of, of production. So it's like basically from the start, from the idea to the end product, right? Yeah. Uh, we start with collecting information, basically a lot of research that either comes from, um, from blogs, from re online reviews, from our own um, dealers. Yeah, sure. Um, and from ourselves as well, from testing the products. And ourselves. I guess this is from existing products or? or well, something. it can be based on existing products, but sometimes in order to innovate, you also have to take some, some not wild guesses, but some steps yeah. forward, right? Which aren't based much on anything. So or anything in particular. So yeah, we start collecting information and a lot of research in order to, to develop a briefing that satisfies like ergonomic functions, um, technical functions, and also aesthetic functions. So this is also the next step in the concept phase. We also need to define like the basic dimensions of a, of a saddle and the shape. We start out with very basic drawings of the shape and, and we, we check them with our with ergon ergonomics team. So we are sure we're on the, on the right path. You might not find it that surprising that Ergon take ergonomics very seriously. With their crack team of experts, they make sure that every saddle design is up to high ergonomic standards for maximum comfort for a plethora of body shapes. Now they do this via several tests. So uh, when we develop a saddle, um, we try to see what is happening when the rider is sitting on the saddle. Yeah. You want to see where the pressure occurs and how high the pressure is. So um, that's a necessary part to see what is really happening. But also uh, we want to know how the rider feels on the saddle because sometimes you can see pressure that is not really disturbing the rider or the other way around. There is pressure that you that is not really high but it's disturbing the rider. So it's a back and forth process. Okay, cool. So um, explain to me what this is doing then. Okay, <laughs> so that's our pressure mapping foil. and. Yeah. Um, Due to the fact that you have two layers, um, the resistance uh, changes and this is translated to pressure. So um, I can see exactly uh, where the bones are touching the saddle and how hard the bones are touching the saddle. Yeah, That's okay. what can be done. So I could switch it on now and then we can see how the saddle performs for you. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So just keep on pedaling and try to act as if you were like outside. <laughs> I'm outside in the hills. <laughs> Okay, um, shall we take a look here? What we have now here, we can uh, watch the video in real time. Yeah. And you can see um, the pre that the pressure is moving from one side to the other and a bit forward and backward. So um, you're always moving a bit on the bike and the yeah. pressure is moving from one side to the other as you're pedaling. Um, but we can see here um, in a really good way when we take a look at the medium pressure and also um, at the max pressure. Um, that you're loading um, your sit bones very well. So um, the middle part of the saddle, um, there is no load. So yeah, you can good. see, yeah, you can see the um, the good part of the of the channel that is um, unloading the sensitive areas where blood vessels and nerves are um, getting out of the pelvis. Yeah. And um, so the bony structures are loaded, and that's exactly how we would like to have it. And so, how many people do you think you go through this process? Um, I would say not enough. So um, it helps always, um, it always helps us in the, in the development process to get as many um, 
pressure distributions of people to um, design our saddles the way that they suit um, the most the most riders outside, outside as yeah. many riders as possible and that's why it's so necessary to get as much data as possible and so we're moving uh, from events to events or um, getting people in here um, to get their their um, butts measured yeah. <laughs> and so this helps us to um, create a saddle that um, can cope with the problems that people are having and create the pressure distribution that we would like to have yeah. to load the bony structures and unload. After we sketch and we have the, um, uh, like a clear idea that everyone's behind, um, we start very, really with the concept development. That means turning it, turn it into uh, functional prototypes. Yeah which involves, of course, um, not only on 2D, but also on 3D. So we move on to CAD design, which yeah. is computer-assisted uh, design or development. So what we got here is a CAD program. It's a 3D program in which you construct and build every part. And, and what we're looking at right now is the assembly part. So it's all of the parts together in one. So engineers let us know, okay, the rail um, drives into this garage, and this garage has to has has to have these specific dimensions. If you don't have, if you don't, it's not gonna fit. It's, not gonna fit, it's gonna crack. It's gonna sound. It's so you. It's gonna have three millimeters, yeah. three point five, four millimeters wall thickness. So you gotta take a lot of factors into consideration. So if you go inside this part, you'll see that it's like this huge huge construction which is feature over feature over feature so it's huge right we can also check like extra parts that we adapt to it to the to the shell and you've got like a rear mod guard which you can adapt to the clip uh, on the base of the shell one of the cool features of the SM man saddle you have no idea when you look at the saddle base mm -hmm. how yeah. much work that you've just shown me goes into yeah. it that's insane yeah. this way we can create functional prototypes uh, which we produce also in-house through a milling machine, 3D printer and uh, some magic hands from our, our colleagues. So we can try different construction concepts maybe or see how far we, uh, we can push the limits of, of each product. Once a design concept has been approved digitally, a prototype is made in-house. Now using the CAD designs, the prototype is milled from a choice of varying densities of foam. The rubber exterior material is draped over and the padding is attached to a 3D printed shell. As soon as we finished the first prototype, we would go and uh, put it on the bike, go ride it here locally in Koblenz, and then we can already see if, if we're happy with it, if there's anything that we want to change. Um, and at the moment we're doing a study here in-house, so it's people um, of the region that are coming to visit us here and do a study and test several saddles and also test them outside, give us the feedback um, through a questionnaire, so yeah. yeah. We sometimes we send it to, to other riders, professional riders or that are sponsored by us as well. Yeah. They send us their feedback. We have the FMD racing team, Canyon Factory racing team, we have a few young gun racing teams, all the different athletes in different sports from XC to uh, downhill and uh, we send the prototypes out to them so they can actually test and then we Skype with them, we talk to them, we ask them about their opinion and then try to um, put all that dis feedback into the product again. Wow, so, th so they're actually testing some of those prototypes similar to what we saw earlier. Exactly. If we find out about things that we want to change, we just change it in the CAD. You always have to keep in mind, okay, I changed the shell. How is this going to affect padding, rail, and, and other components, yeah. right? Yeah, sure. How is this going to look uh, on a bike right now? If we're saying this is not comfortable enough, we need to add three millimeters padding to the... to the, the appearance again. And then, three months later, you have to check, like, oh, this looks too fat for a downhill uh, bike, right? Yeah. So in order to avoid these, we need to always go back to the briefing, to the original, uh, requirements which we from the start stated are the most important thing. And then talk about it again and again, get everything finished, redo the thing and do everything again. And again. And again. Until it, we get it right. And on top of that, Ergon conducts constant in-house lab testing to make sure all their designs and materials stand up to the rigors of continual use. And if you follow me in here, we're gonna find that hopefully Freddy is up and running in here. 
How are you doing? Hello, hi. Yeah, cool. So, I've just been talking upstairs with the crew about how the 3D design turns into the rapid prototyping, which we've seen now. Now here, you're going to be doing some lab testing in here. Yes. So, can you just tell me the sort of tests you've got in here and how you get a product finalised before it goes to production, I guess. Yes, so this is our static testing machine uh, that we use to try to understand how the, our saddles behave, the different materials, how they deflect. Yeah. Um, for example, we want to see how the plastic part, the shell of the saddle, how it will deflect uh, having different thicknesses so we can make sure that the saddle deflects in the right way for the type of, of saddle you're, you're trying to make. We can actually run a test uh, if you want, so yeah, you can definitely. see what, what happens. Let's see actually what happens um, to the saddle. We are about to load the saddle with uh, 70 kilograms which are going to be loaded onto these two points, okay. which, are our, which are our sit bones. Yeah. They simulate the, the bones of the body. I can already see it flexing, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And interesting to notice also that the nose moves up a little bit as the saddle is pressed down. Um, uh, these are the sit bones that we have right, uh, right now, right here, but uh, we have other type of sit bone uh, shapes uh, Depending on the kind of riding you have, you, you're doing, you're gonna be lean more uh, forward. Sure. So your sit bone position on the saddle is gonna change. Yeah, of course. So you need to have different uh, sizes of those sit bones and also different width, depending on the anatomy of each person. Obviously, that's gonna differ. And so, that, wow, that's a serious amount of testing that has to go on yes. for this. So, what, what is the goal of this part of the testing? Is this for like stress of the saddle? Is this for um, comfort? It's to really understand how, how much the saddle moves when you pedal, when, you, when your load is on there, when you're pedaling, because you don't want too much movement or too little movement, or yeah. you want more for one kind of riding than another, and to see how different materials will, will behave, will allow deflection or, or not. So it's to, to make sure we're doing the saddle right for the type of riding that we want, for the, yeah, for the type of riding. Cool, and what, sort of, what other tests have you got in the lab? Uh, we have uh, temperature testing here. Uh, for example, we, we, we simply heat up the saddle to a certain temperature for a long time and see how that, the materials are affected. Then we can, after that, we can maybe run this test again and see if uh, the, the results are different. different after exactly, because wow. yeah. obviously you can leave a bike outside in, in a high temperature for a long time, yeah. a whole summer, 40 degrees, so we have to make sure that it can withstand the heat well. Also humidity testing, because you oh, have that yeah. problem is in many areas, and humidity can be a, a huge problem. All these um, humidity, heat, and, and uh, high, very cold could make the, hard, the saddle too hard, yeah. make it more uncomfortable, so it's important to make sure that it stays, it stays comfortable even in these extreme conditions. What would the effect of humidity be on a saddle? Uh, it could become a bit harder. All yes. oh, right, okay. Uh, there, there are problems uh, of, you hear about problems of people living in humid, high humidity areas that they, they, they say the saddle, some saddles can, can change over time. So we have to make sure that we choose materials that don't change their properties, their, their behavior with high humidity. Wow, so this is totally not what I thought this was gonna be like. It's not just simply making, getting the correct foam and the correct base and the correct top and no. checking the saddle is strong and stiff. There's so much more yes. to saddle development. Wow, this is quite impressive. And then after that, it's all about uh, bringing it to production. So not only ergonomics and engineering feedback always, uh, like in one, in one t uh, table, but also regarding production. So we go, we travel to our manufacturers as well to take care of, like go through all the projects in order to, because you can, you can design something really cool here, but if you just leave it to, to your manufacturer without working and learning from each other. Constant communication. It, it can be like a huge gap between the, the expected result and the end result. So you yeah, have to yeah. be also there and learn from them, get their, their feedback regarding production and then you can kind of hand in hand develop the best product possible inside a time frame because it's always the determining factor is always time. Um, well, there we go. That is a, uh, a finished Ergon saddle. I certainly didn't think there was going to be that many parts to the process, uh, but I'm seriously impressed by the sheer amount of design, industrial design, testing, prototype testing, laboratory testing. 
and then real world testing that goes into making something like this has certainly made me pay a bit more attention to it and certainly the fact that they make these for different sit bone widths is definitely designed around different style riders. I think it's a super interesting process and well worth checking out. Definitely get yourself measured up for the right size saddle. The saddle is the key to being super comfortable on a bike. Um, hopefully you found this as interesting as I did, uh, touring around the uh, facility here in Koblenz. Uh, for another Canyon related video, click over here if you want to see a Canyon e-bike versus a Canyon mountain bike. That one's over on EMBN. And as always, don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up here at GMBN Tech. And of course, don't forget to click, share and subscribe with all the content. Cheers guys.